Okay, yeah. they're not better than you, they're just different. And we can all get to, you know, we can arrive to do something in from different directions. The imposter syndrome, the famous imposter syndrome. You don't need it because you, there's no point comparing because they've got a different strengths profile. They have a different personality, they have a different way of achieving things. Yeah. Which, better or worse, it's just different. And once you know yours, okay, brilliant. It's turning the self-doubt into self-belief. Right. Because right. we all, I think especially women, especially we have this tendency to see other people as better than us and, you know, the comparison and things like that. But, and also that procrastination, mm-hmm. that's to me is another massive thing from these strengths, because as I said to you, you, you know, you might not want to do it, but you know, you can. So yeah. not wanting to is a very different starting point mm-hmm. to thinking I can't do this because you know how you can do it. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. I brought Lindsay Guest back because we've had a lovely summer together of working on my strengths. And we were just laughing before hitting record because there's a theme when you're in the mid 40s of blaming everything on your hormones. And and so anyway, I I really had no idea I had all these fun strengths, which we're going to talk about today, which you have strengths as well. And sometimes we we kind of think about estrogen and our hormones as our our superpowers. But honestly, we have other strengths we can bring up when the hormones just aren't flowing like we want them to. So Lindsay, welcome back to the Health Fix podcast. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, we have had some fun. So, so for everyone listening, we got to get everybody like up to speed here. Lindsay mm-hmm. did a podcast with me a couple of weeks ago, and what we're going to do, of course, these will be back to back. But she educated me on strengths and strength based coaching, and I was like, well, I need to know what my strengths are because you can't just tell me that we have strengths and then we all are individual and then leave it like that. I had to find out what they were. So we found out what my strengths were, and we did a. a two series of them. And I'm going to let Lindsay kind of explain the two series again, just to give us a little recap. So the two types of strength testing we did were Clifton and then the VIA. So give us, give us the background on those two. So folks kind of understand, and then we'll go into what mine were. Okay. Amazing. So yeah, they're both global strengths assessments. So the Clifton also Gallup strengths, it's called, that's more of a kind of professional based one it helps you a lot more in that kind of area of your life and these are strengths let's call them talents that are pretty um fixed so they're not going to change over time and in fact I don't know the exact amount of years but the you actually they don't let if you're registered you actually can't retake the test just because it's not something that's going to change um so those can help you more in a let's say a professional yeah, in a professional way. And then we did the VIA, which is called value, which stands for values in action. And as they sound, they are more values. Um, They can change slightly over time, depending on if you've had big life experiences or, you know, important changes that have gone on. And you can also really work to change certain values as you go along. Um. But yeah, so those are where we start. So we put that together with the positive psychology um, aspect of it all. And well, please and continue. I'll boom, forget. And boom from there. Like, I think a lot of people, you know, the positive movement, you know, has gotten a little bit of a negative rap because people are like, mm-hmm. I can't think positive all the time because it is natural to have negative thoughts. And we're not trying to, you know, say that you're not going to and never have one ever again. It's more like, how can we bring back out that reinforcement of how much of a solid, strong strength have in person I am when you know, maybe we're starting to feel like, okay, I'm getting older. Okay. You know, my estrogen is declining. Maybe my cognition isn't all on point. And when we start to feel a little bit down on ourselves, we can always go back to, Hey, I still have these strengths. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing with the positive psychology as well. It's not that toxic positivity. It's actually saying things are going to be tough. Things are not going to be great all the time. So let's learn how to put things in place 
so that you can deal when it's not. So we're building up our resilience. You're building up the positivity. You're building up all these little things to help you out when things get tough and the challenges come. So yeah, that's exactly it. And when you've got the strength in that, as you said, it's the time when you're down that you need this stuff to remind you, okay, but I can do this. Right. And if your brain's gone and whatever's going on, you know, okay, you, you remind yourself, okay, I know how I work best. I know the way I'll get results. I know the way that's going to energize me the most. And then you can go for it. So yes, this famous toolbox of yeah, the way you work best. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, we're going to talk a little bit later too about how you helped me create a pathway too so that I can literally work on certain issues I've got going on so that I literally can work through seeing all of my strengths and how they're going to help me. So we'll we'll tell you guys a little bit about that as well here. Now, of course, you might be like, all right, tell me what your strengths are. I want to know. So Interestingly enough, my strengths overlap quite a bit, which is super cool in that my fixed strengths are actually aligned with my values. So I'm happy. I was happy to see that. Like, for example, guys, my my Clifton strengths are harmony, achiever, learner, intellection, adaptability, empathy, input, consistency, relator, responsibility, belief. That's like my top ones. And then my VIA results were honesty, love of learning, humility, hope, kindness, humor, perseverance, appreciation of beauty and excellence, prudence, and fairness. I don't know. I'm going to let you guys ponder on those. Do any of those sound like me from what you've heard from the podcast? <laughs> probably, probably a little. I don't know. A few. Especially love of learning. I, I love to geek out. And this is where Lindsay came in because after Lindsay and I had the first podcast, I was like, Lindsay... I need I need to do this because she offered me the possibility of working with her. And I was like, yeah, we're doing this because this is just so it's so important. And it takes the it takes the let's put it this way back to the negative or the toxic positivity. It takes it to a different level for you to be like, no, wait, wait, I can lift myself up knowing that I have concrete strengths. And I'm sure you've seen this with folks, too. Yeah, to me, it's just turning the self doubt into self belief, right? Because right. we, all, I, I think, especially women, especially, we have this tendency to see other people as better than us, and you know, the comparison and things like that. But and also that procrastination—that's mm -hmm. to me is another massive thing from these strengths. Because as I said to you, you, you know, you might not want to do it, but you know, you can. So yeah. not wanting to is a very different starting point mm. to thinking I can't do this because you know how you can do it. Yeah. And I think also as you discovered yours, no, what I love about this is when you first see these lists, I think your immediate reaction is, well, yes, you know, you with love and learning and things like that. There were so many things. And even with the harmony, you were immediately, well, of course, you know, that's that's just me. That's how I am. But what this it's the power, the empowering factor that comes from this is that then you actually, it's not just, oh, that's me, but we, you know, as we went back and looked how this has shown up in the past for you and throughout your life and how this has helped you get to where you are today and how it contributes to you. And, you know, this is you working at your best when you're using this, these aspects of your personality, which is just you. And then you, yeah, you really go in to see how you can use it so just knowing that these things it's not just who I am right you know but right. actually this is how I work well I think one of the best things that you you help me through in this case is help me see where I'm utilizing each and every one of these strengths because I think a lot of people we take a quiz right because it's like a quiz guys you you pay for it but it's like a quiz and and you and the results are submitted to Lindsay and me of course too but you you know, we've all taken the cosmopolitan quizzes and, and you know, Vogue or whatever, women's health quizzes. And then you're like, all right, great. What do I do with this information? You know, awesome. But in this case, you're looking at them and you're like, I don't understand that. Like, for example, one of the ones that I had to ask Lindsay, like, how does how does this really work for me is the prudence one? Because as we think about words, right? Remember, I was like, well, I'm not a prude. <laughs> I <agree. laughs> <laughs> we had to put it all in the right context. <laughs> right, right. We had to like break this down. So, so folks, I will have all of these. I'm I'm an open book. It'll be in their podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com. You can see all my strengths and 
whatever comments you want to make about it, have fun. But but Are really, sure? yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with it. I mean, the prudence part was the one that like these words. So like, I think we can get caught up in meanings of words too. Mm -hmm. And and what you did was you read off like what it meant in terms of a strength. Yeah. So share with us the word. Let's talk about the word prudence, because here's the funny thing. I just saw from my girlfriend on Instagram the other day. She said that like Hollywood is using the word demure in a lot of weird ways. And she was making fun of some people saying like rain is so demure. And she's like, wow, what? <laughs> so anyway, I bring this up because I'm like, I think a lot of us have twisted ways of thinking of what words mean, or we may have had a misconception or we may have linked it to something. And of course, my first thing was rude. Yeah. I'm not rude. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about prudence for a minute. Can we talk about prudence and you? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Oh, yes, yeah, so that was a good one. So yes, that was your immediate reaction. But mm -hmm. when we went into it and we looked at it, so yes, so that's what we also do. We take, you know, I use the definitions from these two organizations, but then we really personalize it and look how how it is with you. So with you, it was be it's being prudent is being cautious. You know? Mm -hmm. So then when we looked at it in its correct <laughs> definition, <laughs> it applies to you a lot, right? It does. Yeah. Yeah. It, it so does. It so does because yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to be on top of things with yeah. with it. And in, with, in your role, you have a big responsibility, and so it shows up a lot. The more we talked and throughout of our sessions, it was just so evident that you have this big sense of responsibility, and therefore you're not just willing to fly into things, and and you really care about what you're doing. So prudence for you is a very strong one and yeah. it shows up in so many areas so then when we looked at it more and more oh yeah there 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 you're like ah I'm like okay not so bad not so bad so you know that's one word another word that I kind of you know liked I was like oh, okay I like harmony right mm -hmm. and and here's the one where a lot of people are diving into right now and I think you and I talked about it too people are diving into are some of our strengths that show up, is it a coping mechanism? Like good strength or overdoing the strength or not enough of the strength. And harmony, I, I've i always identified harmony, you know, with I, I want peace everywhere I go. I want people to come in my office, feel chill and peaceful. I want people to, you know, telehealth wise, whatever I'm doing, I want peace. And that was also what I wanted in my childhood quite a bit. I didn't want anyone fighting. I don't like conflict. And so I had to really look at that one and go, okay, how much of this is strength? How do I use it as a strength? And how do I know when I'm taking the strength and trying to trying to overcompensate like people please or or trying to cause things there? So what did you tell me on that department? Well, what did I tell you? So that is the strengths overuse, mm -hmm. which is very easy to do because these strengths are, are just our natural way of doing things. So it's easy to fall back into using these, these talents, let's say, or these way of being, these personality traits. But we can often use it, if we're not careful, to our own detriment. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. even with prudence, I mean, a lot of these or learner, learner is a classic one that becomes so overused by people is, is you never if you're someone who loves learning and and also has, is improve, has a lot of prudence. Again, these strengths all work by the combination and how they all show up and the order in which they show up. But you could be someone thinking, well, I haven't learned enough. You know, mm -hmm. I've got to be cautious. I can't go out there and say what I know because I, I haven't learned enough. So at a certain point, you have to be, okay, I'm overusing that. I know enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see, I mean, I could totally see that. And I think that's where a lot of people, you know, when we, when we talk about strength-based coaching and things of that nature, it's good to have that awareness of where am I overusing, where am I underusing, maybe even some too. Because I think in my case, when we were working on, on there was one day where I was kind of down. I had had a mm -hmm. crap day and I don't know what the heck happened, but I would say maybe I was close to getting my period. 
maybe maybe which we should have looked at which week it was right i should have looked at the schedule to see what that was i i do wonder though if i i have certain times where i look at my strengths and i'm overusing because of certain times of the month maybe and i'm feeling down and i'm underusing others and so one of the things you called out on me that particular day was you need to journal what you're using what you're what you're not and in what capacity and i learned that like i typically will default to a couple of my strengths and the others are on the back burner do you find that common for a lot of folks absolutely because i think these things they just are so innate that's what you go for Mm-hmm. And with you, what I just found, and it came up quite a few times, and we and I see this a lot, you know, if you've high in responsibility, high in empathy, which you're, we tend to use these also, so it's slightly different approach, but we use them towards other people, and we have to then be aware that we need to also apply them to ourselves. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the default thing is, we we do that we do that but no how can and that's what we looked at quite a few times with you wasn't it how have I how can I just flip it a bit so I'm still using these strengths but in a way that really benefits me and it's not to my detriment yeah empathy is a huge one for me because Mm. I do when someone's not getting better when someone feels pain I am feeling it with them and and for me that sucks right but when i'm feeling that way yeah it's i'm like dang it feel better you got people to take care of right you know buckle it up chick you gotta move on get get moving but so yeah like i i totally admit that in in this process of working with you i've realized like yeah i i'm not i'm i'm working on it for sure now but in the past there there was a lot of uh incidents (laughs) incidences i don't know (laughs) <laughs> episodes let's call it an episode lots of episodes of hey, non, <laughs> non-empathetic behavior towards myself um yeah. and and so you know i i these last four weeks like guys i can't tell you how introspective it has been for me to be like huh oh. you know this is why i chose certain things it almost helps you to choose and, and so Lindsay, i wonder if you've noticed this with folks because this is another really like not rabbit hole but like pathway i went down is like is it is it common during the four weeks of working with you for folks to really realize like, oh, wow, I chose certain pathways in life. I chose certain pathways in relationships, you know, everything because of these yeah. strengths. Yeah, absolutely. And I, so this is one of the aspects I actually love. Well, I think I love all of them, but <laughs> this one is working with quite a few, you know, women who are entrepreneurs, they're in there doing their own business. And when you start to look at the strengths, it's crazy that they really match with what they're doing. Because I think obviously once you're choosing to work for yourself, it's generally born out of a passion. So to have got there it is going to match with your interests and with your areas of strength. So with you, the harmony obviously goes everywhere, but your love of learning. I mean, this podcast, as we were saying, this is, you know, you want more information and you also want to distribute it and share it with everybody. So it it really does show why it's all, yeah, kind of culminated in this moment that's brought you to do all of this, whatever it is that, that you're doing there. (laughs) <laughs> I think that's an interesting point the the to do all of this, right? Because a lot of people we get to our mid 40s, there's this there's this concept of midlife crisis and yeah. and you start to either doubt yourself, you start to wonder and I I mean, I'm going to blame some on the hormones because I do think that it does jack with our thought yeah. process, right? Like yeah. either progesterone's low, we want to be on an island and the heck with everybody else, forget the business, forget the family. I don't like anyone, you know, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Right. I'm out. And then if estrogen's low, you know, then we've got the teary or if it's high, we've got the like rage and, you know, all kinds of other things happening. So I think we can get to a point midlife where we're like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be? And I and that when I came to you, honestly, was in the back of my mind. Am I you know, am I doing what I'm supposed to? Is this my purpose? Is this my mission? Yeah. Well, that that? I've had that in so many people and it's beautiful. It's just like I'm really aligned with what with what I'm doing even for myself for me it has been and it continues to be this 
yeah, it's an affirmation. It's like, yes, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And this is what I can do. This is, let's say, if you want to call it a gift, whatever it is, but this is what I can share. Yeah. Because I can't help someone just strategically set up a business. That's not me. I don't have that in my strengths profile. But so there I am and I'm interested in coaching and I'm, you know, these workshops with women and and then many years later doing this, you know, through the positive psychology, I come across this strength stuff and I'm like, oh, of course, I've got empathy. I've got communication. All of these, it, it's perfect. Includer, they're all my mind are so linked. So again, it just, when you're having those days when you're doubting yourself and I can't do it and what am I doing and who am I to be doing this and that, you just find that I'm aligned, but I, you know, I have these words written on my phone that I, you know, they're on my home screen. So it's this constant reminder when you need it. Okay. I got this. I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I can't stress enough how wonderful it's been for me to see these and really integrate it in because I mean, honestly, you've given me a gift of knowing that like, okay, I have these strengths. I am working in alignment with what I want to do and my purpose. It's like, but what what was even more valuable than that, though, is knowing that there are different ways I can get there compared to other people. Because you you had said to me the one time, you know, because I'm like, man, you know, I have this, this, I was looking for, oh, it was the, it was the, the three main areas of executing relationship building, communicating. And I was like, I feel like my message just doesn't get out well. And I'm I'm not a great communicator. And you were like, wait, you communicate in a different way. You're not, it's, it's not, we all communicate differently. You have to think about it this way. And I'm like, oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, this is the other thing, which is amazing. And again, we go back to, you know, the comparison and the, yeah. Uh... All, all of this, yeah, I, I'm. They're better than me. Okay, right. they're not better than me. They're just different. And we can all get to, you know, we can arrive to do something in from different directions. The imposter syndrome, the famous imposter syndrome. You don't need it because you, there's no point comparing because they've got a different strengths profile. They have a different personality. They have a different way of achieving things. Which, yeah better or worse it's just different and once you know yours okay brilliant so how can I use that right right and you were also talking to me about there was a stat like you're like one in 33 million or something they were determining oh, exactly. and then, yeah so according to the Gallup research they ran there's I think it's one in 33 million uh, is the possibility of someone else having the same top five strengths as you. Wow. So basically we're all unique. And even then, because we have more than the five strengths, the ones that come after that are going to also influence how those top five show up for you. So what everyone has an ability in a different way. Yeah. Which is so cool because then it helps you to like figure out who to pair up with, like who to team up with in that that's, case. Yes. For me, that's amazing. There's been a really big game changer for me because now I really look for people that are high in the strategic and the organizational skills and, and, and dis you know, because that's what I need. I'm this, you know, big energy, go for it, talk, spread it out, you know, whatever go. But I need, so it's fantastic for me to make, to have a collaboration with the people that are going to balance it all out. And that's where the magic happens as well. And that's where you're getting this power because you've got the whole package then. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. And also on that one, when you're working in a team, so even in the workplace, it's really interesting, but even at home within the family, when you're aware of your strengths, you start to also think about other people's strengths because it's just a natural progression, really. But if you think of teamwork, and this is an example I often think of, if, if I was, you know, working in a team and there's a problem to solve, my way of going about it would be, OK, let's talk and let's, you know, we'll bounce ideas off and, you know, go straight in there. Also, I have activator high in mind, which just means I just want to go. As soon as I have an idea, go for it. 
But if I'm working with someone who's more, you know, introspective, they need to take their time, they need to research, they want to look at strategy, me going in there, like, let's go, go okay, it's really not going to work for them. And it's going to cause a clash. And so it's not that we don't get on. It's not that we can't work together. It's that we have different ways of approaching things and different ways of solving problems. So once you know that about each other, you can understand and appreciate each other's differences. So it's no longer like, oh, I can't work with that person. Ah, no, they work in that way. I'm like this. Okay, so how are we going to make that, you know? Right. Work? Right. And this is where, I mean, in work situations, I can see where this is incredibly useful. And I know you've yeah. worked in in some of the, the worksite wellness kind of situations on this mm -hmm. side of things. I'm kind of thinking of it relationships too. Exactly. Absolutely. It is, to me, it's something that impacts every aspect of your life. Absolutely. Relationships, communication, the communication, as I said, I know that I communicate in a certain way. Other people don't. And they, they come to it in a different way. Hey, Hell Junkies, struggling with sleep? As a former insomniac, I can relate. Devin Burke is a pal of mine. He has the Sleep Science Academy. He's been on my podcast twice, and we've talked a lot about how to work on sleep naturally, without supplements, without medications. Devin's program really does work with you to help you understand what is going on in your brain and body when it comes to sleep. And as a listener of the Health Fix podcast, he's given us a code for 10% off of his program, DRJ10. So if you're interested, use that. I highly recommend his program. So let's get back to the podcast. When you're looking at strengths, right? I'm, I'm super curious. Have you tested your kids or can you do like a certain age range? Like, do you have yeah. to be a certain so, okay, age? Okay, so the Gallup, the Clifton strengths, no, but the VIA, yes. They do a, um, yeah, one, one for younger, younger kids. And yeah. it's really, it's really interesting. So, I mean, some of the questions they're not quite sure about, but I think even there, the really important thing is even to just get them thinking. And I actually did, yeah, I did the strength sessions with them, um, with a teenager. And it was beautiful because I made her, first of all, I just gave her a list and, and, and she came up with her own. And then it was incredible because when she then did the VIA, it was basically the same. Wow. And I had not, I, I have to, I hadn't expected a 13 year old to be so introspective and so self-aware and it was beautiful. And the other amazing thing is that then when we went to see how they show up for you, you know, as adults, we're a little bit more, you know, we, we don't talk ourselves up and we don't. Right. Was with this girl, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I am really kind with my friends and I, to my friends. And I do really. And it was just so natural. And it was fabulous. So, again, just they're saying, okay, so look, I don't know, she had a summer camp she needed to go to that she was really worried about. So we just went through all of this, how are you going to face this? And, you know, you know that you are kind and you are, you've got all of these values that are you. This is who you are. So just remember that if, remember that's who you are. Remember that you've got all of this stuff that you offer. And so, you know, stand up know you've got it then obviously which is going to take a long time but the earlier you start with this yeah I mean you're just really instilling a, a foundation of self-belief just from the outset I mean I think if you'd have started this so much earlier think of the things that you went to later on then obviously also there we've got crazy hormones going on in teenage years and things yeah and all of those brain brain wiring uh, bits of fun that we have going on at that age. But again, I think it's just something that you can go back to. It's this, you've got it. Once you've got, and like you were saying, they're just words. But then when right. you go into it, you've got these words, then these words have a real meaning. They've got a power that you can go to and use and, and switch on when you need it. I mean, how crucial would that have been to have in like sixth, seventh, eighth, high school, you know, in these great, like, I look at it and I go, man, if I would have known this, like, I could have, 
<laughs> Not that I want to say I should have, could have, would have kind of stuff. You know, it's just like exactly. well, it would have <laughs> saved me a little grief. Let's say that. Let's yeah. Yeah. say that. Like if I knew that, you know, I was all about harmony and, and no wonder I wanted to own a spa for so many years, you know, and all about like it, it's yeah. it. It's like it makes so much sense. It, now. Well, everything just starts to make sense. I think university applications or right first job. Oh my goodness! Think how much stress and pondering you'd cut out. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you have an idea, right? You know that you want to enter one field or another. You know, maybe you're more mathematic or you're more language, but you know what it is. But having that confirmation. It just gives you that extra confidence and this, yeah, and the self-belief again. And at that age, amazing. Well, at any age, as we know, but you know, there are I think there are certain moments in life when it can be extra important or getting into new relationships. If you right. really know your values, my goodness. Right. You know, because you have those feelings inside, don't you? Those gut instincts like mm, the red the whole red flag thing. Right. But if you really gone into your own values instead of maybe putting some of them aside as you know can happen at the beginning of a relationship you might give it a bit more weight yeah 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 no instead of being like he's cute he has a really nice car <laughs> exactly yes but exactly yeah right but he does not yeah oh my gosh yeah, yeah. I mean it's so, just yeah it's just so much in it I just love it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it definitely radiates, right? It radiates through the whole time that we we're working on everything. It was just like, oh my gosh, you just love this. And and it's great to work with someone who's so fired up about what they do. And, and it, you know, like, like I said earlier, it gave me a new like spark basically on what I'm doing because I, I'm not, you know, as I said before, I was kind of like, I love the podcast. I love working with clients, but I was kind of feeling like, like, where do I go with this? Okay. You know, how do I do it where I feel like I'm getting folks the best results and I feel like I am in a state of, of where I could contribute the most and yeah. get folks feel. Yeah. Good. Exactly. So it's this real thing of like you bring your own um, strength and values to other people. So your mm -hmm. impact is amplified when you do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And even the speed with which you do things, because you know that if you're working in your areas of strength, you, you're more energized. There's not again, I can't remember if we said on the on the last one, but if you take it at a school level, if you think about a subject at school that you hate and a subject at school that you love, and just the thought of going into that lesson, think of the energy that you can feel having to go and, you know, compare the two. Your energy, your natural energy comes from your natural way of being. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love it as I get, I can't remember what we said last time, but it's because this has changed my life, which I think so many of us do what we do because it's had such a profound effect on us to start with. Um, I've done the positive psychology course to try and help me out of a really bad time in my life when I was so negative. I was so negative. And then the particular aspect of the strengths, I mean, all of it is amazing, but this the strength thing, like you said, is tangible. Mm -hmm. You've got something there to look at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and work on and base yourself on and believe in. Because, you know, like we said, you see these words, that's just me. But OK, but what does that mean? Right. I mean, I think so many people right now are getting into the manifestation space, you know, wow. and, and the non tangible. But when you're trying to figure out, like, how do I become the person I want to be? How do I create or manifest? You know, if, you, if you're into those yeah. sorts of words, that person and, and when you have something you can anchor on. Yeah. And it seems like it's such a great platform to move forward. Yeah. Well, even the whole manifesting thing, it all comes in together. Because if you're wanting to believe it and you're wanting to, you know, create that life that you're, that you want, again, you can dream big and you can visualize, but you can actually understand. It, it takes you that one step forward, right? Because when you're manifesting and visualizing, you actually want to be there already. Right. So again, what can help you do that is with, a, like you said, an anchored belief 
that you actually can. Then how it's going to happen, uh, we know that just comes from somewhere else. But again, it just gives you that extra foundation mm-hmm. or a springboard even. I really see it as a springboard, I think, more than both. It's, 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 yeah. That's a, I like the springboard because, you know, if I, if I apply it to myself and I look at like, okay, you're an achiever, you're a learner, you've got intellect, you've got adaptability, you've got empathy, you've got all these things. And, and I look at this and I go, okay, this is where I want to take my business, right? I can take every single one of, of those strengths and go, okay, how can I use them strategically in each and every aspect of my, my vision for the future and, and be that right. So the manifestation, like you had already said, be that person before you get there. Well, you kind of already are that person. You just have to see it through the eyes of the strengths. That's kind of what I, of course I can do that. And this is how. Mm -hmm. So again, back to the whole toolboxing, but it's not just, Oh, I can do it. Cause again, that's another thing I can okay but yeah that's kind of abstract and hopeful and but but I can because I am this and because I have these talents so it's not just yeah you can do this I can do it because right right and I think that gives such a huge level up on yeah. things because before before talking with you before knowing my strengths I kind of was trying to do a little bit of like this is what I want to do this is how I want to go but it seems so far away no. from because I was trying to take it from my con- my conscious brain versus the subconscious and the actual me yeah. I would love for you to talk a little subconscious conscious in terms of these strengths because a lot of people have some probably knowledge of which which things are conscious strengths but subconscious on a lot of these is where I was going that I didn't really bring yeah well it's just bringing everything to the forefront isn't it it's again it just is Mm -hmm. so it's just really again it's there in your face and like we were saying with you put when you start and the reason that we do the four weeks is because if you just do one session you're like oh wow that's brilliant and then you just forget it. So if you, that's why you need this consistency at the beginning. And as I said, I have mine on my phone. You put them on a post-it because you need this time at the beginning to really, you know, see every day how these things come up. It takes five minutes, but it doesn't. It's, so it's not a magic solution. You need to put some time and effort into it, but it doesn't just by remembering each day, just for five minutes. Okay. What did I use today? just for this period of time, just really mm. starts. And as I was saying, you know, it's great for me because doing what I do, I'm constantly being reminded of other people's and it makes me think about my own. So it's brilliant. But you do just need to have that initial period where you are thinking about it and it is at the forefront of your mind. Yeah, it's, what was I going to say? Oh, because the four the four weeks is is great, but I'm glad that you've got more after that because it just helps to like solidify things. Because when we got to the last version of of the the course or time together, you were like, okay, now we're going to work on something, and now we've got to go through the process of it. And and I like it because I I'm like I could see people work through multiple different issues in the course of time to work with you because like we started dabbling we're working on one right now and you know it's really feeling good enough feeling you know smart enough i am statement world Uh, for those of you that are familiar with that but it's really just being confident in in that i am this i am smart enough i am good enough and a lot of us have that kind of things we're trying to work on. But also I'm thinking, like you said, the teenager who's who's trying to to get into college and or applications for jobs, you know, just in general, looking at this to help work through certain issues. And to me, for me, exactly, it was from separation, divorce, mm. these kind of things. Yeah. Massive time. And especially there I was reflecting because unfortunately I came to it afterwards. Right. Unfortunately, these things happen as they're supposed to. But I remember thinking that it's at this most difficult time. Well, there are others, obviously, death, all these kind of things. You know, you become, you you lose your partner and suddenly 
the future's gone that you thought you were going to have. So these times when they're the most challenging and you're at your weakest is also when you need to take some massive decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember thinking the things I needed to do when I was on, you know, at rock bottom. Right. And if I'd have had that, I mean, you're not, it's not going to be sky high at any point, uh, you know, if you're having one of these massive life crises. But just having that knowledge, and, and again, it's a self-belief. Mm-hmm. Everything's falling apart, but, you know, it's just going to st- keep you that little bit higher because, okay, but I know that this is my way of dealing with things. I know, you know, it might seem impossible, but, you know, I've got the concrete proof that in the past I've achieved using those kind of personality traits. And so, you know, I can't even think straight today, but I know I don't have to think about the fact that for me, it would be reaching out to people is the way I do it. For someone else, again, it would be researching, looking into it, learning, reading, whatever it is. So even just that can have just, yeah, it's just, it's this, yeah, it's, we're back to the empowering word, but that's what it is. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, it, it. I mean, I have to say it worked well for me in terms of empowering me to move forward and, and what I wanted to do with the business, how I'm going to tweak it in the next coming months. Yeah. So for those of you guys listening, stay tuned. Things are changing. All like exciting stuff on its way. It's going to get better. But like also at the same time, you know, I we have this talk, right, that we have in our head. And and the running voice, right? That narrative, or, or people like to say, like their their um, roommate <laughs> or woman in your head. Um, yep. We have that negative or or that observant voice that'll say mm-hmm. things like, "For you to do that, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. why? How can you do that?" Yeah. And this is and this is where I've seen the the strengths to be able to be like, yeah, well, I have this strength. I can exactly. So you can go back to your little hole. <laughs> exactly. Look at me being all capable. <laughs> but yeah. So again, and that's the whole, you know, the comparison, all, all of that kind of stuff. It, it it just feeds into it all. Yes. Yes. Comparison, also doubt, also negative self talk. You know, it's negative and, and, yeah, reframe. Is that really true? I've heard you on other podcasts that I listen to yeah. talk about this, which is, you know, it's something we do. Like, is that really true? No. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Cause like the, the beliefs are wild. And and when it comes to health, I want to switch this to health for a minute because obviously this is the health fix podcast and folks might be thinking like, well, why are we talking about business and career? Well, that's part of your health, but also you can look at your strengths to help you get out of a health situation. Absolutely. And I know that you have a background, of course, too, in in health coaching and things of that nature. Let's let's twist this a little bit out of my realm since I was working a little bit more in in my mental health mm-hmm. and instead twisting it more towards a physical health condition. Have you worked on your own physical health conditions or anyone else like worked with anyone else that had a well, physical I, like, I think one that I always like to think about on myself, doing exercise. I'm not, I'm not the most disciplined person. I get excited about stuff and, you know, distracted and things. But we know, I know that I like being with people. I'm the communicator. So my way of ensuring that I do exercise is that I will make an appointment with somebody, call a friend, make sure it's in there because that's how I work well. And I know that that aspect is enough that I, w- I will show up for that appointment. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than getting sidetracked by something else so what is it that you're good at it what is it that you're going to stick to what is your way of working and how are we going to apply that to whatever it may be getting out more sleeping more you know and and then also as we went to our through the the why why are you doing this because again that's a really important thing is anchoring it down there and that is a massive um, factor in keeping you going and keeping you committed. Oh my gosh. It's not abstract. It, it can be, especially when you're looking at like, we've got say XYZ health condition. Maybe it's an autoimmune condition. Maybe it's chronic yeah. fatigue. Maybe it's hormone imbalance. Yeah. 
we all know that at the root of this, and especially in my world, I'm going to start with food, air, water, like your environment. And yeah. sometimes, like you just said, you know, for you to exercise, you've got to make an appointment with friends because that way you can build on your your communication with friends and, and talking with friends. But for other people, you know, let's think of some other habits like eating eating well, meal prep, things of that nature. How could how could we look at the strengths and go, okay. Okay, so we've got a love of learning. So let's right. say someone really loves learning. Um, or responsibility. These are kind of ones that you can go into. Responsibility towards yourself or responsibility towards others as well. I mean, obviously, we always want to start with ourselves because that's how it's going to work. But you can use it in whichever way is going to work best. Mm -hmm. So you need to get, you need to eat better. Okay. You're, you're high in the, you love learning. Okay. So here's some research. Here's some data. Here's some interesting staring at you facts of why you need to do that. Mm -hmm. And the person that loves learning will then really get into that. And that will help them stick to their goal. Responsibility, you know, let's bring it back to that. And who is it, you know, for yourself, for others? And maybe in that case, if it's sometimes you don't have the response, sense of responsibility towards yourself, then, okay, let's think of who else it is that you might be affecting with your good or not good choices. I could see, I mean, I can see how this habit would go towards folks who are struggling to quit a particular yep. bad habit. My friend and I have a joke about, just stop, just stop it. But oh, obviously- so you know, if it was that easy, we would Everyone have would be perfect. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. The the cigarette well, that, and wine company. That's the thing with the goal setting as well that we did. This hope mapping, which is another this positive psychology thing, which is also when you do this, you get these tools that you can use, these strategies that then you can use for anything going forward. Well, exactly. If things were that easy, there would be no problems going on. Everyone would be super in shape, super healthy, super sleeping as much as they need to sleep, all of that. But it's not that simple. And life kicks in. Right. And this is the thing. So again, and that was another thing that we did is is the resilience and and building up the proof. And if you already look at what obstacles may come up, Let's take the eating well, as we were saying, you know, okay, so I'm going to, oh, really excited. I've got this new diet and everything is going to be great. And, uh, and then three days later, it's your friend's birthday party. Okay, so let's see that coming. Let's just take a little minute, see that's coming up. And what are you going to do to get around that? Rather than arriving at the party and like, oh, you know, and then fe tripping up <laughs> and then going home with a sense of failure. And then we know where that then spirals to. So again, prepare yourself because the road ahead is not going to be plain sailing. And there are going to think, so if you take it also in like, if it's a really practical way, okay, what am I going to do about that then? And then as we were saying, that builds up the resilience and the self-belief because then you've actually overcome a challenge and that gives you right. this motivation and hope that oh, I can do this. Right, right. Oh my goodness. You're so right. Like there's 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 infinite ways to to take this to the next level for for so I mean for so many reasons. And and hope the hope mapping is I I think probably one of the best things that was outlined that we outlined together to really hammer down like this is how we're going to move forward. And this is how you're going to use your strengths. Because I think a lot of people right now might be thinking like, okay, that's great. I can maybe think of my strengths, but if I'm in like a crap mood and, you know, life's it's just- It's raining. I was going to right. go for water. It's, it's raining. Or right. I didn't sleep well because the kids were crying all night. You know, all of these things. So let's already right. think about how we're going to overcome these problems instead of falling down at the first hurdle. Right. So there's many ways of goal achievement, right? Um, there's the smart goals. There's so many of them. Person and everybody finds their own way, and you know, however works best for them. For me, I always got. I don't know. I just never particularly liked any of them. They just never really resonated. Whereas this one for me, again, game changer. And now I will use it. And perhaps I don't go and put all of the columns that we'll talk about now. You know, you don't go through every step, but you. 
in your mind, you automatically are thinking ahead. So mm -hmm. I think that's the secret. So one is again, we so we have all of these ways of so you think about what your goal is, you think about why. And again, that's going to anchor you down because you need the emotional connection to the to the goal. Um, and and then so how am I going to achieve that? And then we look at, OK, but what's going to what could potentially stop me from doing it in that way? Yes. So again, I think a very stupid, but for me, very real example. But if I decide I'm going to go out for a walk or a run or whatever it is in the morning, I've got to get my stuff out the night before. Because if not, if I have to get up in the morning and start to walk to wherever they are, I'll have seen about 15 things to do on the way. And that mm -hmm. needs moving there and the dish option needs putting on and whatever it may be. And then by the time I've done all of that stuff, my window for what I was going to do is no longer open. So again, so then think about that. OK, I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to be late. So think of the things or oh, it's going to rain. We were right. talking with you what we were thinking about um, meditating. Right, right. How are you going to make sure that happens? So what was, can we use one of your examples? I remember yeah, that, yeah. Was like, I, I can't, you know, there's, I've got so many to choose from. And that sounds stupid. But if you sit down and then you start scrolling. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to meditate. You're going to be scrolling through anything so and everything options and suddenly oops it was time to get up and go and work and get the day started so it seems really silly but actually just he's getting that stuff in and then what happens you got up to meditate but you didn't do it because you ended up scrolling oh and then an instagram post came on and whatever's going on and what's the feeling that you get from that you're disappointed in yourself i can't do this i'm not no. So and we were talking there also about the atomic habits, right? With right. James, the best, one of the best books. Um, but so it's again, and then you're just building this proof that I can do this. I'm the kind of person that meditates. So so we said that. And then um, just trying to <laughs> keep yeah. it to the home mapping. So and also then you can look at is there support systems mm -hmm. put in place? Um, as we were saying, it could be if you've got young children and maybe exercising is one of your things, you're probably going to need someone to help out with the kids and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then what I want to bring into that hope mapping to, you know, keep it relevant with the strengths is, OK, and what are my strengths that we're going to remember, you know, that I'm going to remember that I have to keep me going and to keep the momentum and to keep me motivated? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like we said, you can apply that in. I want something that about starting a business, something about sleeping more, something about eating more healthily, whatever it may be. Yeah, it works. Yeah, you can apply it every single thing in your life. And like, yeah, literally, our my goal, my ultimate goal, because I was working on, I was my my big goal was like working on self worth and things of those nature. But then we had like a, a priority of finding Zen. Right. Which is funny because my top thing is harmony, which I know I can find it. The key is scheduling it. That was my biggest issue. And so why did I want the the Zen is because I, I wanted to allow me to make a bigger impact. And then the going through like goal pathways, which way can I find Zen? Well, I come off of sailing. So I was like, yep, sailing, totally, totally Zen. And then nature walks and and you know, walk, uh, hiking, um, physical activity. And so morning meditation, like you're mentioning was one of my biggies. And the, the biggest thing that yes, yeah, scrolling or for me, my biggest procrastination, no joke is email. I will find a way to just keep checking email, which is so weird. And then, you know, really just tell my husband that I needed support and my dog so that he could, he's laying down here so he could keep me on task. And then, um, you know, going through through the strengths, like, yeah, I I'm achiever. Right. So I want to make sure I do. I, do, you know, I like to complete my goals and mm -hmm. harmony, of course, being my big one. And then also learning about myself. And I think mm -hmm. this is one of the things about me and learning. I learn about everything else. But my, uh, I, I have learned about well, everything I, else but myself. And that's what this this last past year has really been about is me to be like, who is who is this creature that makes up me? And, yeah. and why do I do what I do? And I think yeah. this is a great thing to kind of bring everything back around for, for why did you strength-based? 
It's self-discovery, absolutely. And once you know yourself better, what is it that you want to do with that? You want to have a better relationship. You want to make more money. You want to be healthier. Okay. Well, I know how I work. Right. Right. And so now it's just figuring out how someone else works and then then coming into, you know, for a relationship. Now, for for those of the folks that might be listening who have businesses and they're like, man, I just wish my team would get get along. Right. You do work with folks where you will put everyone through the same thing that we went through. And yeah. then from there, I'm curious, how do you get everybody to understand different people's strengths and oh, then be able amazing. to call yeah. on each other? Because that, when we talked originally, I was like, that's fascinating. And at some point, I am going to have to have more of a team than just me and my lovely assistant, Brian, which is not my dog, by the way. It gets confusing. I have He's not that Brian smart, and my dog. <laughs> Brian the dog can be an assistant sometimes, but Brian the human is a is a great assistant. But they are two different people. But at some point, yes, I want to expand my team. And so I was oh, amazing about this. starting point. So yeah, well, if everybody does their own, so you do like a mini strength session with everybody. Everyone does their own strengths assessment, and then we put it together in a grid. So again, like we said, once you're aware of yourself, you also start spotting strengths in others naturally it just happens mm -hmm. um and, and you appreciate the differences you know it's not like oh she's not like me it's like oh she's not like me because she is good at that or he is good so that's an interest so yeah so you do a mini strength session. so we do a, a mini strength session for each person and then you just bring it all together everyone shares a little bit about themselves we do a strength grid so you can really see written down joint strengths because in each team, you'll have areas where, you know, you've got a lot of people with the same and then all of the individual unique strengths. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at each, you know, each team will have whatever project it is or whatever it is that's coming up. And so, OK, so how are you going to use that in that particular thing and who's going to bring what mm -hmm. and who's going to work yeah. with whom even to achieve that? Mm hmm. I like that. I like that. And so that's where the grid comes in because you're basically going to outline like whose who's who's roles are what. Yeah. And it's already just the fact that you're aware of your own. And so you can also reflect more on others. Communication is already boosted enormously. Oh, and also then if you putting the right people to work, you know, on the right thing you're more motivated because you're doing something that you love and then you're more successful at doing. Results are going up, you know, product productivity goes up, more everything. Right. And everybody's happy because they're doing what they like mm -hmm. too. And it just makes for a better team. I mean, I think about that in terms of teamwork for families even if you think exactly. about it too. Like how, yeah. you know, chores, who does what chores, right? Even maybe if we think of it that way, but also just getting along in terms of family, but also in terms of small businesses, things of that nature. And I think for a lot of people where we struggle in life with whether it's continuing with the business, whether it's, you know, do we change careers? I think a lot of it's interpersonal relationships too. That can take over. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, it's foundation, <laughs> right? If things are going good at home or with your friends or with your partner, the world is doable we know when you're in a bad relationship and mm -hmm. you're yeah it's community i think that's so important and it affects everything mm -hmm. and so doing this work you know the reason i wanted to bring you back on and talk about all of the different things that that i've experienced and do you know just just doing this is is so vital for i think you're your mental health, but also can be physical health too. Because like we mentioned, if there's certain habits, we can't seem to nail down. Yeah. This is a great way to be able to use this and, and get the healthy lifestyle going and get the momentum so that, you know, you can age well at yeah, any age. Yeah. And of course, you are helping folks with that too, because you guys, as I mentioned earlier, Lindsay does strengths-based coaching, but she also has a background in holistic health and health coaching. And so she kind of brings it all together for you. So if you really are struggling with something, this is where I'm seeing like it all comes together, right? Because most of our issues is, as, as a doc, when we get down to the nitty gritty of a condition that is preventable, 
It's yeah. a lot of times mindset and habits. Awesome. It, well, this is something was so I I was obviously I'd done the health coaching for years and the positive psychology coaching. I started for myself. It wasn't my intention originally to, you know, really go in that direction. Um, but I just saw the similarities. Well, one we know it's a jigsaw, and you can't have one without the other. Mm-hmm. So we know that as a you know at the outset. But the similarities at the end of the day thinking well, eating well, living well, they all come down to small habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's all the same thing. It's all the same principle. These tiny little things about positive thoughts, reframing, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Because with the positive thinking, they've seen their their habits that you can acquire. Some people have them naturally, but those of us who don't, you can learn them like with all of the yeah all of the um eating better you know it's just small 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 steps you know every day a little thing that all then contribute but you I mean you need them both don't you we know that you can't you're never going to be healthy if you know full health if you don't have a positive outlook and if you're depressed you could be eating in the most perfect way but if your mind's not with you on board that's not how no no it's not at all and I think this is a great way to kind of just give another up leveling to things but at a level you know a lot of people are like oh health coaching you know I'm just going to talk to someone no we have concrete data here that you can enforce (laughs) and I'm saying enforce that may be a harsh word but you can enforce on your on your brain to realize that like you can do freaking anything you want And it won't be easy. Like it's not going to be without challenges. So again, this is what I love about it all as well. Let's take the realistic approach. Mm-hmm. There's no point saying I'm going to go from zero to a hundred. Mm-hmm. You're not going to change overnight. You know, yeah. your diet. You're not going to. Right. So, right. But let's do the small steps that get you there. So huge. So huge. Lindsay, thank you so much for for giving me the opportunity to work with you and discover so much. And like, no joke, I am forever grateful for you bringing back the spark in my mind as to this is my purpose. This is why you're doing this. And and hopefully folks will will thank us one day for for something of giving us good. I don't know what I'm saying. But thank I'm, you. it has been, I have absolutely loved doing this with you and your work is just so important. So, and thank well, you for giving me the opportunity of coming to talk about it here. My pleasure. We will keep the conversation going because I'm sure there's going to be certain things that we have to update on and do, uh, absolutely. you know, a recap. So thanks again. And I will make sure that we tell folks, actually, before we do that, we got to tell folks where to find you now. Okay, so, well, Lindsay Guest is my tag on both Instagram and LinkedIn. And the new is, we're having a big relaunch right now. And um, it's, you will find me at The Brilliance Project. So website currently uh, under construction, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. (laughs) But it's www.thebrilliantsproject.co. Okay. So that will probably go in the show notes, but yes, you can find me there. Awesome. Mm. We'll do it. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.